tell us about your journey into actually like doing scenes with people. So I, um, do you know Emma Magnolia? Of course, we have had yes. her on this show. Yes. So we kind of were like intense coming up together buddies and in, back in Arkansas where we're from. Um, so we were like always living right next to each other and we just got into it together, which was so nice to like have a close friend, mm -hmm. you know, instead of having to figure it all out by yourself. But yeah, she was the who showed me the. Oh, yeah. OK. Yes. So Yo, Emma. Yes. So who was so that she could support her nonprofit, which I also worked for. Narcan, yes. Right? Yeah. So, so I was amazing. like delivering the with her and. and yeah. See, so, everybody, it is a true story. It's it's a true story. I've had people have been like, this is not true. People aren't that wonderful. Well, that would be such a weird story to make up. <laughs> uh, it would be, but it wouldn't be probably the first. The first. Yeah. But yeah. Yes. Well, I'm here to uh, verify. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, we started doing this together and just figuring out all the marketing. And I had not been on social media for like years before that. So that was weird to like get back on and suddenly mm -hmm. become like kind of dependent on it. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so your first scene was with her, I assume? My first scene was with her, yeah. yeah. It was like a I was a I was a student in her class and I was always kind of baby and Emma was more kind of like mommy dommy situation. Uh -huh. That was sort of our dynamic back then. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like passing notes in this class and she had to punish me. Yeah. That was mm. my first ever technical scene. <laughs> and I assume like you knew you liked girls before that happened? Yeah, for sure. Always liked girls. So you always knew. It yeah. Wasn't like a discovery moment. Yeah. Do you consider yourself bi or do you like, yeah. like, like, do you, or do you have a preference on whether or not you date men or women or are you kind of pansexual? <sighs> yeah. Kind, kind of pansexual is accurate. Like I definitely have the whole bi girl, like bipolar thing where it's like reactionary sexuality almost mm -hmm. like, oh, this man broke my heart. I hate men now. Now I have to like date women and then mm -hmm. women, but women broke, break my heart and then blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of on men right now. Like they're being bastards as always. So I'm also like, I'm like, oh, I want to date a girl again too. But I also kind of like want to be a housewife with a husband and baby. So I don't know what the fuck is going mm. on basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a <laughs> wonderful journey we call life. <laughs> so you've had some porn injuries. Is I, I, that right? Yeah. Can you just tell us about <laughs> what happened. We oh, love, God. we love a good scary story it, here. It, it was, it was pretty scary. Um, yeah, so my my second scene I did with Brazzers was like a threesome that filmed so late into the night. Everyone was just getting uncoordinated and tired and mooky, you know. And yeah, the the guy in the scene, Van Wild, he was um, he was like holding. Okay, it was him and Demi Sutra. Mm. He was holding her hands while he was like fucking her doggy style mm -hmm. while she was eating me out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're visualizing this. And he kind of like, I guess just pumped a little too hard, reared back a little too much. And Demi came up like at least a foot and then like fully dropped down teeth first, like into my pussy. <laughs> it was so scary. And I did like, it was like a guy getting kicked in the balls. I was like, oh, and just like rolled over. Like while we were filming, I was like, no, 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 this is not happening. There was blood. There was blood and and literal hair in Demi's teeth. Oh. Like it was. <laughs> so fucked up the director was like god damn it because it was like almost midnight at this point like yeah. we were just trying to get it over with yeah yeah i've been there <laughs> i've been there but yeah it was really crazy because like after we stopped the bleeding it, there was a little cut it was kind of in my pubes so we were like okay we can keep going but the next day it was like basically healed it was like mm. the pussy juice just magical <laughs> potion <laughs> <laughs> that is a unique injury. I have not experienced anything specifically oh, like God. that. I would not wish it on anyone. <laughs> I've had like, you know, the ones where like you bend the dick the wrong way oh. or break the bed or accidentally oh. go in the wrong hole. <laughs> Those are fun. <laughs> but yeah, that's a very, it's a very unique porn injury. Bent dicks are just, yeah, man. I, w I hope that never happens anywhere near me. Yeah. I yeah, don't like the sound of that. No, no. I, I can't imagine what that would be uh -uh. like. <laughs> and it can be permanent, you know? It, costs, it can cause yeah, permanent yeah, I know, no, no, no. I know guys that have, like, broken their dick. For real, for real. Yeah, for Ugh. real. Um, you have mentioned before that you were addicted to anal cleano. 
ha- I have mentioned this. Can you, can you explain this to us? <laughs> I'm kind of off the sauce at the moment. Oh, I, I haven't even mentioned this, but I did move this weekend, actually. I actually showed up for this podcast like two hours early. I've like been in the valley for a minute because my brain is just like super scattered right now. But anyway, I say this because I don't have my anal douche at my new house yet. So I'm not anal douching at the moment. Okay. But if if I'm with a guy who likes anal, I just, I love for it to be clean. What can I say? And I want it to happen all the time. I don't know why I do this weird thing where I like douche, but I don't tell them. And I just hope when we hang out that we have anal. But I'm not like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not like douching and then being like, my ass is clean. Let's do it. I'm just like, what if my ass was mysteriously clean and we just happened to have or What anal? if I was just ready for anal all, <laughs> all the time? <laughs> I remember like, okay, this is kind of a random aside, but you know, like Kirsten Price and Kieran Lee, they've been married forever, right? I remember when they like first started dating, I, she filled in for me last minute for somebody and I I forget how it came up, but it was something like she was already shaved and ready to go. And I was like, damn, are you like, (laughs) how you're always like this? And she was like, yeah, I like always, basically she's like, I always like to be like ready for Kieran. And I was like, wow. Who does that? Wow. I'm like. Dream woman, robot woman. Yeah, I know. I was like, damn. Karen, you got very lucky. You have a lovely wife. <laughs> Only she can put up with your bullshit. <laughs> we love you. You know we do. <laughs> I think it, it does speak to kind of the, it, it is lovely to have a hygiene routine with porn. Like that's mm-hmm. one of the greatest parts of the industry, of being in the sex industry in general to me. I was not the most hygienic girl before I became a stripper and then I was forced to be and I was like I get it now I kind of like this yeah yeah yeah. I mean you learn so much about your own body yes for real which is you know really I mean it's a very educational journey indeed and you learn that like what works for you may not work for somebody else you Mm -hmm. know it's like there's no like one blanket statement where it's like okay this is like that's why I'm always kind of cautionary about doing a kind of PSA when I'm like, girls, this is how you should clean out your vagina or your mm-hmm. butt because it's different for every girl and what yes. works for one girl can give another girl a yeast infection. Yes. And it's like, you just got to like try the different things and see what makes sense for you. Yeah. Anal prep is so individualized, but I love hearing about people's routines. I'm like, what do you do? How do you do it? I will say like <laughs> I get colonics from time to time, oh, not so okay. often anymore, but they are Awesome. It's the most uncomfortable 45 minutes of your life. What's uncomfortable about it? What the the physical it? sensation? Yes. Uh-huh. That they're like pumping all this water up your colon. It's awful. I hate it. Oh, God. I want it. I want it. Like I've, it? Never, I've never had one. Oh, you haven't? But I want to. I have my shower enema. Okay. But I want to try a colonic. Yes. No, you got to do the colonic because yeah. they like, I mean. All the way up in yeah, there. Yeah, it's terrible. Ugh. It's awful. They basically <laughs> like have you. You and you kind of like let them know, like you go for as long as you can, then you let them know when they you need. Them You're to tapping release. out. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Basically, you tap out. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's horrible, but they like get shit small, literally. Enough. That's like up there. You're yeah. Like, what the fuck? It's not, and they can like look at it and tell you. Like if you're what you're eating, like if you drink enough, like if you drink too much alcohol, like it's bizarre. Like they just <sighs> it's like it's like tea leaves. They like read your shit like coming. Through oh, my like, God. I love tube that. And, like somehow like know everything about you. It's really <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> wow. I feel like I would be great at that job. Honestly, I feel like I would enjoy that. Yeah. 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 And you have to like it's one of those things where it's so uncomfortable for the person at the time. So you have to like make good, good at small talk. Mm. And then you like massage their stomach. And then you also like take a magic wand to like their legs. Because it's really? something, you, yeah, it's like you want to like massage the legs because that helps. Relaxes like, or something? Yeah, I don't know. It helps it like go through. I don't know. They oh, just my take the fucking magic wand to your legs. I don't know. It's pretty bizarre. Oh, I love that. But it's great. <laughs> it's great. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind-the-scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. 
So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.